In this lesson, we're going to set up a corridor and define targets. Targets can be either horizontal or vertical and can consist of profiles, feature lines, polylines, alignments. Anything you can use to define a horizontal or vertical feature can be used as a target for a corridor. In the Create Corridor dialog, I'm going to give my corridor a name of Rural Road. I'm going to set my alignment to centerline alignment and my profile to the FG centerline. I'm going to set my assembly and then my target surface for this corridor. I'm going to leave set baseline and region parameters selected so I can go in and take a look at my targets and see what's set in there. First, I'm going to set my frequencies, however. Uh, frequencies are, as we discussed, how often uh, an assembly is inserted into your drawing uh, or into your corridor. And the lower the number, the more it's inserted and the less interpolation has to happen between the insertion points. This can be really important when it comes to curves, uh, both horizontal and vertical. Under Set All Targets, I can see the existing and daylight surfaces that are set for my retaining wall and my conditional fills. I have no other targets set. I'm going to cl click OK and go through the modeling process. This is going to take a minute to model. And of course, with the corridor insertion frequency, uh, higher is better, but at the expense of speed and performance. So now that my corridor is modeled, I'm going to take it and look at it in a 3D view. Let's select it, right click, and go to Object Viewer. And let's go to a realistic view style. And then I'm going to zoom in on an area. And I can definitely see where the assemblies were inserted. Let's go to the code set style. I want to be able to see this a little bit better. I have a visualization code set that I've specified. That gives me uh, a little more graphical information there. So I can see my pavement, I can see my sidewalk and my daylight there with that code set style. Let's take a look here at the widening offset that we specified earlier. And you can see that our lane did not widen. Let's go to the corridor properties. And under Parameters, we're going to set all targets. And the lane didn't widen because we didn't specify a target for the widening. So for our width target, this is where the naming comes into play that we discussed in our last lesson. For our right lane super, we're going to target our centerline alignment right offset. See how those match up nicely and it's easy to figure out? We're going to do the same thing for the left, only we're going to select our left alignment and click Add and OK. Make sure you click Add and OK or it won't actually add it. Now we're going to click OK and go through the modeling process again. And you'll see here that our lane did widen as it was supposed to. It reaches out to the horizontal extents of the offset alignment. Let's go through a quick rebuild here. You can see exactly how long this takes to model. All right, and you can see that uh, we did a little adjustment there on the conditional cutter fill so that I'm not going uh, so shallow. I, I got it to six feet instead of four feet so we don't have quite so much wall there. And uh, I see that my wall is inserted, but 
it doesn't really look like a wall at this point. So we're going to take a look at code set styles and see if we can fix that.